In the last couple of years, I've been reviewing all kinds of different arcade related products. But there was one particular one I think it had like a lot of potential and he absolutely dropped the ball with this one. So that's basically what we're going to talk about. But why did I really like it? It's just purely the way how this thing was constructed, the things you could do with it, but also the software itself. It had a lot of potential and even when I received the product, there was more like oh wait, you can do that with it? So they were selling something they didn't even realize it had the potential to even run Emulalic. A piece of software you can download for free and can play thousands of games. All the old school stuff, think about an Atari, Commodore 64, Amiga, uh, the old school MIME games, everything was very nice and runs very great on this, simply because this thing has similar specifications like your typical Super Console X. But there were some things that you need to know before you can get into the rabbit hole. So back in the day I did a quick unboxing of it and I will say that I was flabbergasted about the quality. This brand called Keku, personally never heard of it. It was a quite interesting piece of technology simply because not only the way how it looks but also what you could do with it. You could just split it up and have two separate consoles. A very unique design I personally never seen because you always needed to buy let's say one big stick or two separate sticks. So basically it's a pretty good deal you can do basically like use a thing like a gadget stick a front or tv or you could just get yourself like two separate sticks and play in some relaxing couch with your friends i want to welcome you to the wicked game rank collector and let's talk about some more cool stuff that you can pick up from china now because i just wanted to show you so let's take a close look at the bottom part because here we're having some interesting features too so over here we're going to get the option to choose between the Xbox 360 PC, so that's very convenient, also if you want to use it on different systems. Here we have the option to put it in Android mode, and here we can put it in PlayStation 4 mode. So when you're removing the caps over here, it's kind of weird that it's more like a flap, you cannot fully remove them. So this is basically the thing that connects both of the controllers, that's it. But I just want to do in disassembly because I just want to show you how the transforming mode works. Okay guys, so next up let's take a close look at the transformer mode. So what you need to do, like you need to slide these two over here. That's it, that's the only thing. Now it's unlocked and now you can slide the two parts and make it a one joystick. That's it. That's a really cool thing and a really awesome feature. Something I have never seen before with a Pandora's box. Okay, so let's get ourselves a piece of plastic or the attachment. And the only thing you need to do, like when you disassemble it, is that you're going to slide it in you need to be careful with the two sliders over here at the back click it in it goes quite sturdy and that's it folks and we're having ourselves a single player stick and this is a future that makes me really exciting but let's take a close look at the stick let's uh, so we stick it together nah just review it like this the reason why we got so many different cables is very simple so the original one that is attached, you cannot di disassemble it from the joystick itself. You can't remove it, so you're stuck with it. But here we're going to get the USB port. We need to connect this one, but with this port, we can basically hook the systems up together. But also you can use it like a separate system of on, an, let's say, an Xbox 360 Android with the switch that I've shown you before. Long travel Chinese buttons, like we get on most of the arcade Pandora box sticks. And I must say that I'm a little bit disappointed with the quality of the wiggle stick, simply because it's more like a sandwich clone. They're not really bad, but for the price that you're paying for the device, give us at least a Senwa joystick. Both controllers are going to get a player one button over here. And at the back, we're going to get two other buttons that we're going to need, like for going back into the main menu, but you can configure them if you want to use them on, an, let's say, a different system like an Android box or and PlayStation. So all the buttons that you're going to need for select start are over here. The original software that came with this thing was absolutely garbage. I think that is one of those main problems we're having with these like products coming from AliExpress or other companies. You get something that looks very promising, but in the end they're completely messing it up with having like pretty damn poor emulation performance or just general problems with the software itself because these things are running most of the time on old hardware specifications. So a great example I just wanted to show you why I think they completely dropped the ball when you're just powering it on you're going to get yourself like this weird looking Android interface and they just slapped some weird program in it with some games that you can actually play. But the overall performance of the games were pretty damn sloppy and we had so many issues when it comes to that.
unfortunate yeah this was the thing that you was going to get in the beginning so when you're looking at the software itself we had the option to sideload some emulators if needed Beside that, we did have like Netflix and Prime Video, so we also can use it and actually like an Android box because that is what is in the inside. But let's take a close look at the other software because this is just your typical stuff like Rhythm EP6E, but this tiny arcade that was interesting. When you're clicking on it, it will boot up into Retro Arcade. Here you can say it says zero games found and it will load up the games. There were not a lot of them, I think it were like 452 or something like that with this version. And this is actually the original kind of software that you're going to get. It's very limited, it looks really choppy, it's a mix of all kinds of... Did they have like category system like Winner, Aircraft, Fighting, Motion and Puzzle? Again, makes no sense whatsoever. But let's take a close look at the Emmy Alec. It works exactly the same like your Super Console X. You just basically need to download your software, install the certain boot file. What I understand is that this thing was running on the S905 mainboard, so it's the same like the first generation of Super Console X, and just do some quick testing when it comes to some games. Okay, so this is the first game I wanted to try out, because Super Console X also had a lot of struggles with this. And the main reason is that this stick is not powerful enough. A little bit of a bummer, so I'm hoping in the future, if they're going to release a new version, that this thing will get some more juice, so we can actually play a Thomas Wave way better. Next up, Sega Dreamcast. It will have like the normal glitches. I think you don't see them in this particular level. With Marvel vs. Capcom or the two-dimensional games, you will see like some minor dips, but overall, it seems to be playing just fine. All right, so next up, Mortal Kombat for Main, a game that is really demanding. The sound is a little bit off, I did notice like it doesn't sound that crisp and clear like it usually does. Alright, let's go. Ha! Gotcha! Next up, PlayStation 1. But I think it's more like a Captain Marvel moment, you can see that in the sidebars of course. But this wasn't like a charm on this specification of this main board. Woohoo! I'm getting my ass kicked by King. The first generation N64 games will run fine, or good enough to enjoy. But take into consideration that if you're going to play more demanding games, it will be like a mixed bag. This device doesn't have the required power to run most games. And when you're playing with an arcade stick, and the game itself doesn't support like a D-pad, you're just done. Alright, so this is what we're going to get, and they are quite naughty in my opinion. Because they are using this metal plate. At first you're picking up and thinking, oh man, this thing weighs quite heavy for a plastic fantastic stick. But they are just cheating with this metal plate. But you can see that it's just a custom board. It's, it's not something they grabbed out of the shell. So K-Play just not only designed the box itself, but they also designed the encoder board that comes with it. Main board itself, it's basically like, and I think they did sound like a specially modified K-Play special main board. It's, in the end, it's just, it's just a TV box. And the cooling element itself, yeah, it's a basic element that they just slapped on. You can even, uh, I think if I can basically twin it around, I can basically remove it if I want to. This was a product that had a lot of potential. When it comes to the overall quality, just the way you can play your games with Emmy Alec, you can split it up in two sticks or having one big one. I think it was so cool, but unfortunately it came with a very hefty price tag and the emulation performance was not like comparable when you look at the price you need to pay for it. Nevertheless, let me know in the comments what do you think of this product, would you consider buying it and what is the price you would pay for it. Nevertheless, thanks for watching, consider subscribing and it would be great if you subscribe and hit the little bell because that would mean I will see you in the next video.